Yo, yo, what's up? Welcome inside the opening line. Corey and Benny on the very first Overreaction Monday of 2019. A lot of stuff to get into. Some waiver wire stuff we'll get into. We got some, um, obviously, we'll let you know how the weekend played out with our bets. We got to look at some of these some box scores and see some of the things that went down. A lot of surprises. A lot of a lot of things went uh, according to plan. Um, but before we get started with that, Benny, we still we, it, it, it doesn't it doesn't stop, Benny. We got to start with Antonio Brown, who on Friday we were swearing was walking around with CTE, Benny, and now this morning is the smartest man on the face of the earth. <laughs> You know, the people I, – I joked around about this last week, and a lot of other people did too. I'm not going to say I'm the only one who said it, but as soon as we heard all this BS and going on and everything like that, everybody started popping up with the jokes and the memes about Bill Belichick just sitting there waiting, just, you know, waiting, biding his time. It, honestly, like, this was the most telegraphed situation ever. Yeah. Yeah, you, this, wasn't, this, didn't just, this didn't just happen, Benny. This has been in the works. Yeah, I am – Listen, this is the second client of Drew Rosenhaus, first one being Terrell Owens, who did the exact same thing to get himself out of a situation he didn't want to be in. And get to what he wanted to be at. And, and put himself in a situation where he actually wanted to be and, and where everything's going to work out. Put it this way. If you drafted Antonio Brown, you got to be incredibly happy right now. I will gladly trade one week of production for 15 more weeks of him catching passes from Tom Brady instead of being in the Raiders' offense. So – I mean, you got to be happy about that from a fantasy perspective here. From a football being even perspective, the Super Bowl champions just got arguably the best wide receiver or one of the top five or six wide receivers in football added to their team without having to give anything up. And you know what the kicker to this whole thing is, Corey? On top of it all, one of the things that the Patriots have always been very, very good at is picking up players that – are going to, you know, are in like the last year of their deal that are going to go sign a contract with somebody else next year and the Patriots are going to get a compensation pick for it. So basically the Patriots just picked up Antonio Brown. Antonio Brown, whether or not he, he probably won't be a Patriot again after this season. So whoever signs Antonio Brown after this season, the Patriots are going to wind up getting a second round pick on top of all of this for losing Antonio Brown. If you have any doubt in your mind that this is the best run franchise, Literally in pro sport, not even in football, in pro sports, period, you're a moron because the Patriots are just – they're playing 3D chess while everybody else is playing checkers. Yeah, no, uh, they, they, tried, they inquired about Antonio Brown back in March. Obviously, the Pittsburgh Steelers were not going to let that happen. Um, so Antonio Brown made sure that it would happen, you know what I'm saying, by more or less making his stay in Oakland so ridiculous that he gets released, which is always what he wanted. He wanted to be a free agent. He mm-hmm. gets released. And now he signs a one-year deal. And you know what, Benny? I can see Antonio Brown signing a series of one-year deals after this. Just yeah. like a mercenary. Of, okay, where's next? You know what I'm saying? Where can I go next to piss off Ben Roethlisberger? <laughs> you know what the thing is, Corey? Like, everyone's like, oh, man, he's an idiot. He gave up $30 million. The deal that he just got is $10 million, basically $10 million guaranteed, and it could go up to as much as $15 million. Yeah. So like, in- Brown ain't tripping off no money. Yeah, in one year, he already made back half of what he quote-unquote supposedly lost. And then if he goes signs like a $15 million deal again next year, he's actually in a better spot than he was. And he gets to choose where he wants to go and who he wants to play with and all that good stuff. And he doesn't have to be part of the shit show that is the Oakland Raiders right now. So, I mean, honestly, people can say Antonio Brown's crazy and Antonio Brown's got problems and all that stuff. Antonio Brown, to me, seems like the smartest motherfucker on the street right now. He, he, got, he got everything he wanted and didn't lose any money in the process. If Antonio Brown is, uh, is, is crazy, that's the kind of crazy I want to be, Benny, because, um, yeah. I mean, oh, you saw it all this week on Twitter. Uh, he should not be allowed to play another game until he gets, mentally gets his head checked. No team is ever going to touch him. Nobody's so talented, but he threw it all away. <laughs> and, and now, and now, and now he's part of a three, he's doing with Patriot. Yeah, now he's part of a three-wide set with Julian Edelman and Josh Gordon. That's ridiculous. The Josh Patriots Paul. going into the Patriots going into the season, Corey. We talked about it. What was their biggest weakness supposed to be? Wide receiver. And now it's Josh Gordon, Antonio Brown, and Julian Edelman. Tell me a better three wide receivers in the entire league. It's not, a, it's not a point of weakness no more. If Antonio Brown does decide to leave the New England Patriots and choose another team after this season, 
he very well could go join his nephew, Hollywood Brown, with the Baltimore Orvin, Ori, I mean, excuse me, Ravens. That is not the Orioles. This is the Ravens. And I tell you what, Benny, I'm happy. I have leagues, Benny, where I put up 170s this week with Lamar Jackson on the bench. You know what I'm saying? And I cannot wait to get him in my starting lineups across the board. This is one of the reasons why I was heavy on him and overexposed to Lamar Jackson is because I thought something like this could happen, but I didn't think it was going to just pop off just like this in week one, Vinny. Okay, so, I mean, it is overreaction Monday here, right, Corey? So, I mean, we got we to gotta temper expectations a little bit. First off, I, I, I will say this. I, I missed this completely, right? Like, to me, Lamar Jackson was a high-floor guy, but I did not think that the passing game was going to ever put up the kind of numbers that they put up yesterday. So, the reason why I said I want to temper expectations a little bit is because the Miami Dolphins are a goddamn – No, the Miami – the Dolphins are a joke, but they're, they're a professional football team. Yeah, ar- arguably. <laughs> arguably on that one. So here's, here's basically what happened. I don't know if you saw all the news that was coming out after that game, right? Basically, like a third of that roster wants to be traded or cut at this point. In time. Already. I mean, we heard this before the season even started, right? Like one of the beat writers basically said, if they trade Laramie Tunsil, things are going to go nuts. Like, like the, the locker room is going to revolt. They look like they didn't want to be out there on the field yesterday. No, it they, was, they quit. Yeah, it was 50-yard touchdown play after 50-yard touchdown play after 50-yard touchdown play. It was through the air. It was on the ground. Mark Andrews had 100 yards. Hollywood Brown had two touchdowns and 150 yards. Willie Sneed found the end zone. Mark Ingram ran for 100 yards. You look at that Ravens roster. If you had a player in the Ravens roster who didn't produce yesterday, I don't. that, that would be harder to do than having a guy who put up 100 yards because it seemed like – Everything they did worked. Everybody they put out on the field, everything was there. So uh, uh, this is the part of overreaction Monday that I want everybody to realize. You're not going to get 350 yards and five touchdowns every game this season from Lamar Jackson. No doubt. Right? Like that would be an 80 touchdown, you know, 6,000 yard season. It's never been done in football history. I don't think it's going to wind up being that way. Is the Ravens passing game legit? Absolutely. They went out and got a whole bunch of speed. They put it on the field, and as we know, speed kills. You know, a lot of teams aren't going to be able to keep up with them. It makes them more dynamic. I think they're going to be better than we assumed because now it's a lot more well-rounded offense, and every year they have a good defense. So, Yep, go ahead. The Ravens team is definitely legit, but what I want to say is, like, let's temper the expectations a little bit because I really do think Miami sucks. I really think Miami could go 1-15 or 0-16 this year. So – Yes, the Ravens are very good, but let's see them go out there and do it against a somewhat competent team before we go ahead and put them in the Patriots playing each other over the Chiefs in the, uh, you know, AFC championship game. AFC is going to be rough this year, especially with those offenses and these young players. Lamar Jackson only runs for six yards yesterday, which is wow. But the rest of the team goes crazy. Now, this week, when you go to the waiver wire, obviously, Hollywood Brown, Marquise Brown is going to be a big name. Be very careful. Son was, son was in the game for, like, 10 plays. You know what I'm saying? And the first two passes he caught were, like, 50-yard touchdowns. So. Exactly. So the home run to fly ball rate is, is, is up there. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you got to be very careful. Uh, should Biz be put in for Marquise Brown? Yes. So should he be the top wide receiver coming off the waiver wire? I'm not so sure about that, especially as we go through today's program. I think it's some guys that, that you can see uh, uh, or that you should bid on higher than Marquise Brown. But Marquise Brown is a home run hitter. is definitely uh, a big name, Benny. But like I said, Sun was had five targets. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah three of them. Four, four of them for 150 yards and two touchdowns. Crazy. Not gonna happen every game. What do you think, Benny? For what? What Marquise we should put Brown. in? What we should put in as a bid for him? Like, yeah. What, what 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 do you think about you know the rest of the season for him? Or do you agree that you know, or like you said, temper your expectations. This is not hopefully what is we not. Let me not. Benny, I don't think this is what it looks like when when you're playing in 13 snaps. Yeah, I agree. Like, that's that's the biggest problem is I think that you have to look at at Brown as somebody who's going to be very big play touchdown dependent, right? Like, you know, a great example of him is Deshaun Jackson, right? Like, him and Deshaun Jackson put up very similar games yesterday. If you look at Deshaun Jackson throughout his career, he's going to have four or five games like that a season. And Brown may be the same kind of guy where he has three or four games like that throughout the season. 
But the games where he doesn't do that, it's two catches for four targets for 27 yards. That's like five fantasy points. You know what I'm saying? So can he have upside for you? Yes. But I don't, I'm not going to go blowing my entire fab to make sure I get Hollywood Brown on my team. No, uh, and then trying to put him in your lineup every week is going to be tough mm-hmm. because you never know when, when, that, when that dud is going to come. Speaking of duds, saw this one coming. Uh, the Atlanta Falcons were a complete shit show for the most of the game yesterday. But let's start with Minnesota, Benny, and Dalvin Cook and what we thought Dalvin Cook could be with this running game and how it's set up now. And he came out early, and Benny, he ran the ball well, hard, strong. He got his numbers. Um, Dalvin Cook was a straight beast yesterday. Yeah, and I mean, they had a big lead throughout the entire game. They were up three touchdowns at one point. I think it was even before halftime or so. They only attempted 10 passes yesterday. That's what worries me, Benny, about this. As a guy that's got Thielen and Diggs on a few teams, maybe they need to be pushed more by a better defense, by somebody that shows up, you know, and actually give them some run before Kirk Cousins goes to the air. But extremely low numbers for those big-time wide receivers yesterday. So, I mean, we have a good example of this tonight as well. We got the New Orleans Saints playing tonight. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the way the Saints played last year, the Saints were a team that had a lot of leads last year. They played from in front a lot last year. And after week four, when Mark Ingram came back, the amount of passing attempts for them went way down. It's not that they couldn't dial it up in the couple games that they needed to, but that's the way I kind of look at Kirk Cousins and the Vikings this year. It's like, as long as Dalvin Cook's healthy, he's a horse. They're going to ride him. Yep. There's going to be games during the year where they're down or where it's a close game or where teams start stacking the box and they're going to need the pass. And that's nice. But for fantasy wise, as long as cook is healthy, I don't think they want to ask again, it's going to be more than 10. Like yesterday was an extreme low case, but I don't think they want Kirk Cousins throwing the ball 40 times. No, I think they'd be happy with Kirk Cousins throwing the ball 30 times them running the ball 20, 25 times, whether it's Cook or whoever else they put in there, and and playing that way, which means that that's less volume that's going to be going around to all the pass catchers, not just Thielen and and Diggs, but also, you know, they're using Irv Smith. They still have Kyle Rudolph. Um, They're going to be working Dotson in there at some point in time. I think that expecting to see the kind of upside we've seen out of the – you know, Vikings wide receivers in years past where they haven't had the running game to complement the passing game is probably a thing of the past. So I would be a little nervous about these guys, although I'm not to the point where I'm going to overreact and sell them for like pennies on the dollar. Yeah, no, no, no doubt. Uh, that's not going to be it either. It's going to be some, uh, but, but what we're saying is it's going to be some ups and downs. And I got digs and I got Thielen, and you know what? It's going to be hard to sit them. You know what I'm saying? So it's going to be a struggle all year. But if you got Dalvin Cook, consider yourself a winner because he looks good. The kid Alexander Madison, probably just a backup right now. Not no flex appeal with him. You know what I'm saying? But he ran well also. On the other side of the football, Atlanta's not always going to be this bad. But yeah. we told you coming into this game, and this was a slam dunk for the Minnesota Vikings right here. Atlanta on the road, a team that's notoriously terrible versus the spread. Dan Quinn doesn't see – Dan Quinn's in trouble. They changed the O.C., the D.C., and the special teams coach in the offseason. If it don't work, guess who's next, Benny? <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? You know what? The one constant that's still around is definitely him. So, at this point, you got to take responsibility for it. Again, don't want to overreact. It was one bad game against a good team. They played better in the second half. They made a little bit of a comeback. You know, Matt Ryan actually salvaged his day for fantasy. Thank God. You know, Julio and Ridley both got in the end zone, so kind of salvaged their days for fantasy. Um you know, Devonta Freeman was horrible yesterday. That was he was he was he was just non-existent there. I think they'll play better when they get back into Atlanta. When they get back home, they're a much better team there. I don't want to overreact to it, but I will say this: I'm very interested in seeing how good the Vikings can be because that is a very good defense too. Like, let's give the Vikings credit; they have a very good defense as well. Yeah. So, I think Atlanta's better than what we saw. I think Minnesota is better than I thought they were going to be. Those are the two things I kind of take away from that game. Right now, I would say Minnesota is the best team in the NFC North. And I'm, I, like I said, this is overreaction Monday. But mm-hmm. um, they play the Packers next week, as a matter of fact. And we'll get to some of next week's opening lines uh, before we get up out of here um, and take a first look at them. Um, yeah, so listen, the Falcons will be fine. The Falcons will be fine. I'm, I'm not worried about them too much. This is one that I think that, for the most part, we saw coming. So I was able to hit that. Parlay that Ravens Steelers that Ravens uh Vikings parlay Benny 
My big right. of the weekend, we got that one out the way early. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That was no sweat with that one right there. Thank God. After some of the shit that happened on Saturday in college football. Um, mm-hmm. Buffalo Bills and the New York Jets, Benny. I told you I went to see Nas and Mary J last night. Uh, about the fourth quarter, I left to go into my homegirl's house to chill with her to, um, you know, to get ready to go to the, to the show. And mm-hmm. by the time I got to her crib, the game the Jets were winning, they miraculously figured out a way to lose. Yeah, I mean, that, that one hurt me yesterday. You know, I, I could have been a very big early game. I hit the Kansas City Chiefs bet. They won and covered easy. Um, the Eagles and the Ravens. The Eagles gave me a little bit of a scare there in the first half. But they then got they, back they, to it, though, right? They picked it. Well, they again, I teased it down, so yeah, it was great they got for back me. To it, though. Against the regular spread, they got back to it. What yeah, if you took the Eagles – if you took the Eagles straight up, you, you gave up a touchdown with 15 seconds left that wound up screwing you over in that case. So that was bad. But that's why I like to tease it, right? Because I tease it early in the week down to three and a half. Even if you tease it at game time, you tease it down to four and a half. They won by five. So, you know, that one hurt Vegas a lot yesterday because a lot of people had the Eagles and the, uh, you know, the Eagles as part of their teasers yesterday. So the Eagles covering those teaser bets was definitely something that caused Vegas a lot of money. But, um, you know, basically with the Jets, I mean, I didn't think the offense was all that good. The offense really didn't do much. I mean, if you think about it, the first touchdown of the game was an interception by Mosley, who they spent all that money on in the offseason. And honestly, he was great. When it fell apart was in the second half when he went out. He went out and didn't wind up finishing the game. And at that point, it was just like they couldn't do anything to stop Buffalo. Um, it sucked that I lost. And they couldn't do anything to stop Buffalo. Yeah, and, and, and that's the crazy thing about that sentence is, like, you know, everybody says the Jets are going to be so good and the Jets are going to have a chance to do all this this year. You know, Buffalo's defense is very good. So the offense struggling against Buffalo, I'm not that upset about. And the offense honestly looked good. I'm, Le'Veon Bell looked fine. He looked like the old Le'Veon Bell. Jamison Crowder had, like, 17 targets yesterday. Amazing, Benny. Jamison Crowder in PPR, Jamison Crowder put up 29 points. He I know. Off yesterday, and, and I had him in my lineups. Yeah, and I don't even think he got to a hundred yards, right? Then he finished nope. just shy of a hundred yards too. Yeah, like a Julian Edelman game, he had like eighteen catches for sixty-six yards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. monster production. So that that part about it was was good. I was happy about that right there. The problem is, you know, with Mosley went down, the defense looked horrendous. Like they were just getting lit up, and they were getting lit up by the Buffalo Bills offense, Corey. Josh Allen and crew. Yeah, that is not a very good offense whatsoever. I'm happy we got the John Brown touchdown at the end. I, I, I sent you a tweet. I saw that. Yep. Plus 450 was what he paid on that touchdown. So I was very happy with that. That was good. That made up for the fact that I had the Jets minus three, and they were up 16 nothing and lost the game with all those points coming late in the second half. So, again, to me as a Jet fan, I'm kind of numb to this. It's, it's the same old stuff that happens all the time for the Jets. You can't lose home games to teams in your division and expect to have a good year at the end of the season because they still got to go play them up in Buffalo now. You can't lose home games to team in your division. And with the Patriots looking as good as the Patriots looked last night, I, I feel like this is just another wasted season as a Jet fan where, you know, I'm hoping for a wild card berth at best. I'll be honest with you, the quarterback ain't look as sharp as I thought he would. I think I want to see him improve throughout the course of the season. I like I like the kid a lot. I think he's a good quarterback. I think he can be a good player. I didn't like a lot of what I saw yesterday. Um, he's got to figure out a way to get the ball down the football field to Robbie Anderson, some of these big targets on the outside. That's the only way you truly open it up for Lev Bell. He's yeah. got to be accurate with those throws. He's got to be able to make those throws, Benny, for the offense to open up. On the Buffalo Bills side, you kind of know what it is. You know what I'm saying? Josh Allen scrambling around. Singletary, John Brown, Cole Beasley. I think it's worth a couple dollars if he's on your way to wire this week. I think he's going to be a consistent guy, especially in PPR, giving you about 10 yeah. points a game or so. And uh, yeah. as far as Devin Singletary, uh, it's probably going to be a work in progress, Benny, but he looked good at times. My thing with Devin Singletary is he looked very good in the second half. They're, they're not going to give him the whole role, though. at least not right now. Like maybe by week seven, week eight, he has it. But they're going to still use a little bit of Frank Gore here and there. They're going to kind of work the kid in. But honestly, the comeback at the end of that game yesterday, he was a big part of that. Catching passes out of the backfield, some really nice runs from him. Um, the kid's got speed. He hit the outside. He, you know, he's got good vision. They opened some holes up for him, and he found them. I think Devin Singletary is going to be a really good running back, which kind of sucks because as a Jet fan, I'm going to be seeing this guy for the next, I don't know, five or ten years until they, until they finally move on from him. 
Um, let's go down to let's take a trip down to Turnpike, Benny, and go to Philadelphia and Washington. Who I tell you what, DC jumped on them early, and I was like, this one, look, this one, this one, uh, was kind of fishy. DC, they, when the next time they'll play, DC will beat Philadelphia. They always figure out a way to beat Philadelphia, Benny. They always do. Now, <laughs> that yes. was their chance. I'll give you that. That was their chance. They uh, jumped on them early. They had the lead right there. But listen, this is how good Philly is. Like Philly was Philly didn't get rattled. Philly wasn't doing crazy stuff. Philly Philly didn't do what the Cleveland Browns did yesterday and kind of just go off the rails when they had a little bit of adversity. Philly just said, "Okay, no problem. We got a really good defense. We're going to shut you down because your offense isn't that good." And Carson Wentz and the boys were just like, "All right, we didn't have a good first half. Shake it off." And they put up a monster second half to wind up winning that game. Philly is very good. As Bad person, start, but very good team. As a person who is a Dallas Cowboy fan, there is nothing that puts a smile on my face like seeing Deshaun Jackson catch a long touchdown pass. I'm talking about, especially at the length, Benny. He was made for those spots in front of those fans. They absolutely loved it. He gets a kick out of it. I don't have no shares of Deshaun Jackson. I'm not saying we're going to see this every week. But God damn it, Benny, they're going to try every week. <laughs> you know what? Whether or not it works every week, the threat of it now yep. makes this offense so dynamic. Because teams used to kind of cheat up last year knowing, like, well, they're going to throw short presses to guys like Alshon Jeffrey, who's not really a big down-the-field guy. And also Zach Ertz over the middle because he's not really a big down-the-field guy. But now you can't cheat your safeties up because if you cheat your safeties up, Deshaun Jackson's going to do what Deshaun Jackson did yesterday. To me, he was one of the missing pieces in this offense. You know, they tried to bring in other guys who played that same role, but those guys don't play the role as well as Deshaun Jackson does. Deshaun Jackson adds a dynamic to this offense that's going to make everything easier for everybody on this offense. This Wentz, Philly team is going to be very good. Wentz looked out of sorts at times in that game, early in that game yesterday. And Wentz always looks out of sorts uh, to me at points. But when he got it going with Deshaun Jackson, after that first one to Deshaun Jackson, you could see his confidence grew. He really settled in, and you kind of knew that uh, Philadelphia was going to get back into the game after that. Now, with the running backs, Benny, um, the Miles Sanders owners, I'm, he got a couple runs called back yesterday. Wasn't a good performance, you know what I'm saying? Um, doesn't look like a starter in the 12-team league right now. So I, I got to work with that. I think we'll see more. But like I said, Benny, I was willing to play the long game with Miles Sanders. Now it becomes, do it. does he get in your roster every week? But it's only Monday. We'll figure that out by Thursday. <laughs> I, I, I still think the long game is the way to play. I mean, listen, he could have had a much bigger game than he did. Like you said, he had a couple of runs called back. He also got stuffed twice on the two-yard line. So yep. the good thing about that is it seems like he is the guy who's going to be getting the red zone touchdown kind of carry looks. So that's something you want to see. Even though he didn't get in yesterday and it wasn't exactly what you wanted, it was nice to see. They are still going to use Sproles, which we had said is still going to be a guy getting his carries. They are still going to use Jordan Howard. That's the thing that scares me a little bit here is like, I don't think you're ever going to get Miles Sanders being the every down back on this team this year. They're still going to mix the other guys. Season, Benny. I, think when, when I think we could get it sometime after Thanksgiving. I think you would need an injury okay. in order for them to get it because – Listen, this has always been the Eagles thing, right? The Eagles are never a team that says, all right, we're just going to give one guy all the work. Lately, they've always been a team that says, listen, we're going to have our main guy. And Sanders is the main guy. Like, don't, don't get that wrong. Like, Sanders is the number one. But there's a difference between, like, Le'Veon Bell, who's the number one on the Jets and is getting 90% of the touches, and being the number one on the Eagles where maybe you're going to get 55 60%. That number may grow to 60 65%. But I don't think he's ever going to wind up being the 80, 90 percent guy, at least not this year in Philly without an injury happening to either Jordan Howard and or Darren Sproles. Uh, our man on Sagan Whiteside, I don't think he had any snaps yesterday or very little. But, um, you know, that's another player that you put a long game with. When you look at the other side, Adrian Peterson, a healthy scratch in week one. Everybody is optimistic about Darius guys. The D.C., uh, they're not going to be able to run the football. No Trent Williams. The offensive line is banged up and beat up. Um, but Case Keenum is a guy that's worthy of a look in 12-team leagues, especially in two quarterback leagues. I could see a lot of 44 attempt games from Case Keenum because they're not going to be able to get anything going on the ground. And Terry McLaurin and Trey Quinn Benny are going to be hot names on the waiver wire this week. 
Yeah, I would agree with that. I would be careful picking up Case Keenum for anything other than if you're streaming him. Yeah. You know, like, if, you know, if you had a Nick Foles and you got screwed because Nick Foles got hurt and you, you need to stream somebody, I would rather pick up Case Keenum than uh, whatever the kid is who had a pretty good game back in him, you know, that came in for, for Foles. But at some point – I That came in for Foles, that Minshew dude, uh, that's, a, that's a last chance you do. Oh, is he really? Yeah, he's from the, he's from the, uh, the show Last Chance You uh, from their first season when they were in, um, in East Mississippi. And son made it, son. And he's not a bad quarterback, yo. Hey, it's a good thing he got that last chance. He actually played pretty well yesterday. I think yeah, he completed he was like twenty-five. <laughs> I was just gonna say he completed almost all of his passes, put up some pretty decent numbers. Actually, got them on the board a little bit. Um, but the thing I was gonna say about Case Keenum, Corey, you and I both think that at some point this year we're gonna see Haskins. Yeah, exactly. So don't go too crazy. I know he had a good first game. Don't go too crazy putting a lot of money on Case Keenum. Case Keenum's a guy that you want to try to get on the cheap if you need to stream him or if you just need to plug him in for a couple weeks. I don't imagine that he has the job all season. So just temper expectations with that. We'll figure out some more information on McCall, um, McLaurin and Quinn and get you a proper number for your fab bids a little bit later on in the week. But I do think that uh, both gentlemen deserve to be uh, on rosters, particularly mm-hmm. McLaurin with his ability to uh, stretch the football field. Um, Dude, and, he, and, and he goes missed on two of them, too. He could have had a monster game. There was two of them yesterday. On. Yeah. Um, I was wrong. Well, I covered the number on this one with the Rams in Carolina. That money line was no good. But mm-hmm. um, it's uh, we see – listen, Benny, I didn't see much of this game because I kind of got disgusted. But you know what Christian McCaffrey is? He's just <clears throat> 200 all-purpose yards yet again. You go along with two touchdowns. Um, I don't like what I saw from Cam yesterday, no touchdown passes, whatever. I thought the wide receivers – Moore and Samuel did decent, particularly more, more so better. I think Carolina's going to be a team that fights every week, but they're going to have some wins and you have some losers. Rams are just still a little bit better than them. Jared Goff, not the biggest game yesterday. Todd Gurley carried the football well. Uh, and you obviously see that Cooper Cup is uh, <clears throat> a big part of that offense, along with Robert Woods. Brandon Cooks gets a short end of the stick this one. I think this game was exactly kind of what we thought it would be. You know what I'm saying? Nothing really – outlandish to take away from this one, Benny. So here's my biggest takeaway from this game. Malcolm Brown got the touches down there towards the goal line. Yeah. That's going to kill Todd Gurley because if Todd Gurley's not getting those touchdowns, and Todd Gurley also saw less work yesterday than you would have expected him to see. Now, he did put up a good game, though, Corey. Again, this is exactly – I kind of almost feel bad because most of the time we we don't give coach speak 100% of, you know – I mean, let's face it, these guys, these guys lie a lot. Yeah, they lie a lot, and they, and, they, and they say things that don't always come to fruition, but they kind of used Todd Gurley exactly as they said they were going to. They kept him in there for high-leverage situations. He was the guy at the end of the game that was running the ball when they were trying to kill the clock and win the game. They used him less than they did last year, Malcolm Brown being the guy down at the, uh, you know, the red zone who got beat up. And Malcolm Brown is available in a bunch of leagues because I saw him in a couple leagues that I'm in too. Because a lot of people were taking Henderson as the backup for Gurley. And it really kind of looked like Brown kind of had the, the first dibs on that role or has the chance to have a bigger role with this offense. Henderson had one carry yesterday. Brown had 11. Yeah, and Brown had the ones in the red zone too. He got two touchdowns in that game yesterday as well. So, yep. you know, that's, that's something that I think we got to look at going forward. So Malcolm Brown is probably on your waiver wires. Again, I'm not going to go nuts, but if Malcolm Brown is going to be – the touchdown goal line back on a Los Angeles Rams team that's expected to put up a lot of points this year, there's going to be some value in that guy. And honestly, I have Todd Gurley in one or two leagues. I'm not feeling very good about him, Corey. Uh, no, no, no receptions yesterday. Well, one reception yesterday either. Cooper Cup coming back may limit his work in the passing game. We saw Cup um, get a lot of looks yesterday too. As you know, that's one of Jerry Goff's favorite targets. But um, the Rams do go ahead and get that and get that victory over Carolina with that over coming in on that one too. That's probably was the bet, but I did cover that number, but I did not get that uh, money line. Um, Carolina, excuse me, Jacksonville and KC are the injuries in this one. The injuries to Foles being uh, a big story. Also, let's start with uh, Kansas City. Uh, Williams didn't run the football well, but he caught the ball well. Mm-hmm. Sean McCoy ran the football excellent. 
Benny, everybody in the offense has fantasy value. It's just a matter of whose day it is. Yesterday was Sammy Watkins' day. Next week it could be Travis Kelsey day. The next week it could be Damian Williams day. Every day is going to belong to Pat Mahomes. Um, everybody has value, Benny. Yeah, well, except for Tyree Kill at the moment. Uh, you know, Tyree Kill is another injury. Two big injuries both happened in that game, one on each side of it. Agreed. You know – Plays, a couple plays apart from each other, too. Yeah, it wasn't, wasn't that far off. Both of them kind of early in the game. You know, Tyreek Hill going down is actually a blessing, I think, for everybody else because it's just going to open up more targets for other guys. I mean, like you said, Sammy Watkins was the guy yesterday. Nine catches, 198 yards, three touchdowns. He was the 14th overall pick in 2014, Corey. We finally, five years after that happened, got the game that everybody was expecting out of a guy like Sammy Watkins. So if you had Sammy Watkins yesterday, my brother was kicking himself. We were watching the games together, and he looks at his phone. He goes, fuck, Sammy Watkins is on my bench. Sammy Watkins and his his 40-point game yesterday were sitting on my brother's bench, so he missed out on that one. But, yeah, I mean, I think Sammy Watkins has value. Travis Kelsey has value. I think Damian Williams has value. I still would rather have Damian Williams than LaShawn McCoy, but I think both of those guys are going to have – their days yeah because he's the pass catcher and and I also I mean he got in the end zone a couple times yesterday listen Pat Mahomes is one of the best quarterbacks if not the best quarterback in football right now he's gonna put up video game type numbers every time he goes out there and there has to be somebody on the other end of those passes in order for that to happen so you're gonna get big numbers out of anybody that's a part of this offense they did it yesterday to what many people consider a pretty good defense in Jacksonville Although I got to be honest, I think the Jacksonville defensive aura is kind of off from that team they had a couple years ago. This team wasn't that great last year. And I mean, again, they played Kansas City, so I don't want to overreact and be like, oh man, this defense sucks. But it definitely looked like that was a defense that teams are going to be able to put some points up on this year, even if it's not as many points as the Chiefs did. Sure. One of my one of my bigger bets was the Chiefs this weekend, so I was happy that they covered that number pretty easily. No doubt about that. Uh, Leonard Fournette, a uh, good game yesterday. Carried the ball 13 times, ran for over five yards. A pop looked good carrying the football. In games where the, the Jacksonville Jaguars are closer, as long as Fournette is healthy, he'll continue to have some good games. Marquise Leaf started this game yesterday, I believe, but uh, he's a zero. DJ Shark, Chris Conley, D.D. Westbrook, and um, and D.D. Westbrook, and even James O'Shaughnessy all had good games yesterday. Conley was talking to somebody that we talked about, Benny, being for free uh, in best ball leagues. And I was checking some of my best balls last night, and God damn it, you know what I'm saying? Chris Conley made the starting lineup. He yep. up, he had a good game. A guy like Chris Conley, I think, is a is a is a very solid pickup if he's on waiver wires this week. Same thing goes for DJ Shark. Shark. Yeah, I mean. D.D. Westbrook is probably owned in your league, so you're not going to be able to pick him up. But, yeah, either one of those other two wideouts, I'd be perfectly fine putting on my team. Had a little bit of both Conley and Shark on some of my DFS teams yesterday. And, nice. yeah, you know, they, they both paid off. They both made value. All three of the wide receivers actually did because D.D. Westbrook caught that touchdown towards the end too. So, you know, you basically, got, uh, you basically got value out of any one of the Jacksonville receivers that you put in there, which is pretty crazy. Yeah, um, in Los Angeles, the Chargers and the Colts. Colts almost pulled this joint out, Benny. You know, I was trying to watch every play of this one, even though my Dallas Cowboys was on. But um, the Colts looked – the Colts, Brissett looked perfectly capable. Marlon Mack with a huge game with 25 carries, 174 yards and a touchdown, going to seven yards of pop, Benny. Um, I was very thrilled with that. Um, T.Y. Hilton got his eight for 87 and two touchdowns. Other than that, it was kind of slow. But you see who the guys are, and you see what Brissett can do with them. I am – we're worried about Marlon Mack. We're worried about T.Y. Hilton. I'm not saying we should stop worrying about them, but I see the Colts playing a lot of games like, like they did yesterday uh, for the rest of the season. And I think Mack is not going to go for 175, but mm -hmm. uh, I, think, I think we got to be comfortable with our Indianapolis Colts. Yeah, I, I have no problem with it. I mean, I started Jacoby Brissett in DFS yesterday as my cash game quarterback, 4,400 over on DraftKings. Put up a pretty solid game for me. Wasn't, wasn't great. Wasn't, the, wasn't, wasn't Lamar Jackson great, but, you know, he, he was fine, and I think he's going to be fine throughout the season. He's got good weapons there, right? I mean, Marlon Mack is a guy who had, when healthy last year, had some really good games. T.Y. Hilton, one of the top ten receivers, top eight, maybe even arguably top five or six receivers in all of football right now. And then Eric, even Eric Ebron had a touchdown called back yesterday 
But, um, you know, he's going to be another guy that is always a, uh, a touchdown threat on this team as well. So, yeah, I don't mind it. I mean, you know, a lot of people spent a ton of money on Jacoby Brissett with those fab bids. I still think if you're playing in, like, a 10-team league, one quarterback, 10 or 12-team, one quarterback no, league. a 10-team league guy. No, he's, he's basically a streamer is what I was going to say. It's like there's going to be weeks where you can pick him up. He probably belongs on the waiver wire. I would not use a bench spot on, you know, keeping Jacoby Brissett around to keep him from somebody else's team. Really, though, what we thought about this offense is exactly what we saw yesterday. Marlon Mack, um, you know, T.Y. Hilton, maybe a little bit of Eric Ebron or, or Doyle. There's really nothing to pick up or nothing to add here, though. I mean, you got, you got out of this offense what we expected to get out of this offense, you know? On the other side, Austin Eckler was great yesterday. His ability to run and catch the football uh, is really going to pay dividends for this team and his owners. Mm -hmm. I got him in a couple spots. I'm happy about that. Justin Jackson got six carries. He looked good in those. You want to see him get involved in the passing game more as well. Keenan Allen, everybody, you already know what it is. Our boy Big Mike Will, but he only had two for 29. Yeah, it wasn't the – again, Mike Will, as I said, my biggest fear with Mike Williams is that he, he's touchdown dependent. Like, yeah. that's, that's the big thing with him. Hunter Henry had a shit game yesterday too as well. Both of those guys kind of didn't really do much. Maybe that changes going forward. I don't know. Um, Austin Eckler I was very happy with, though. I mean, I had a lot of – I said Austin Eckler was the guy over, uh, you know, Josh Jackson that you wanted. And yesterday he kind of went out there and proved me right. Even if he doesn't do anything for the rest of the year, putting up the, the monster game that he put up yesterday and getting that game-winning touchdown in overtime just to kind of boost it up for me. Um, he made every, almost every one of my best ball teams. He was a guy I had a lot of exposure to. As soon as I heard the Melvin Gordon news, I said, yo, Melvin Gordon sitting out. This is a guy I want to grab. We looked at it at that time. We said, listen, Josh Jackson's going to get some carries, but for the most part, the guy who's going to be on the field more often is Austin Eckler. Eckler's going to get carries. He's going to get all the passing down work because he's very good in the passing game. Again, Austin Eckler was a guy I was really high on, really happy with the way that worked out here. Keenan Allen, solid. That's always fine. Nothing, nothing to really see there. Um, was a little surprised at their defense, Corey. I thought their defense was going to be a little bit better this year. Yeah, I was, but with no, no Darwin James, and they're missing some other pieces on that defense. I think they can struggle like this at times throughout the course of the season until they get healthy. Um, Cincinnati and Seattle. I, this is one right here, Benny. This one right here is tough because Chris Carson was good. He was very good. Yeah. Very good. He caught six balls. He ran the ball 15 times. Only three yards a pop running the football. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But, you know, his pass catching and then he got a touchdown and his volume was excellent. Tyler Lockett, Benny, did it again. One catch, one touchdown. It's like it doesn't stop with this guy. He figures out a way to get in the end zone, but we need more volume, especially from where he was getting drafted at. And I, and I really don't think you're going to get it. I think what you saw I'm yesterday. I'm starting to think that same thing too, Benny. Yeah. This is what their offense is. This, exactly. You're 100% correct. They are just going to pound the ball, pound the ball, pound the ball. And then eventually at some point during the game, they're going to run play action and Tyler Lockett's going to get open deep for a touchdown. It's, it's pretty much what they did last year. It's pretty much what we saw them do yesterday there. The thing that I, I was happy about, and my, I'm going to give my brother props here, which is something I don't do all the time. He was all over the Bengals at plus nine yesterday. Yeah. And, his, and his thought process was, listen, with the way Seattle plays, like with Kansas City, if you get a nine-point total, you're like, all right, well, KC can put up massive points and, and cover that pretty easily. Seattle's never going to cover nine points. They just don't play that way. They don't put up enough points. They don't play fast enough. Seattle is always going to be in these games that it's one or two, you know, one or two scores is going to decide it. And they're just a very efficient team. They, they don't make mistakes. They don't screw themselves over. And when it comes down to it, Russell Wilson, more likely than not, is going to go out there and make the play that he needs to make in order to win the game. Exactly. Yesterday, it was the pass to Tyler Lockett. We see it time and time again. So I don't know why anybody thinks it's going to change. This is going to be a frustrating team for fantasy, Corey. Exactly. They're a good football team. They're not your favorite team for fantasy. DK Metcalf, surprisingly, four catches for 89 yards. He comes up healthy. Interesting, and on the Bengals side, uh, when I did the beat writer survey for the uh, Athletic last week, uh, the guy that writes for the Bengals said, don't be surprised if Andy Dalton has a career year. He comes out right away, throws for over 400 yards on 51 attempts. Now, the rest of it, Benny, I don't know what the hell this is. Giovanni Bernard, more carries than Joe Mixon. 
Did Joe Mixon get hurt yesterday? No, but they were – since they were, like, trailing a little bit, they did go – a little bit more with the passing thing. And that's the thing. Like, Joe Mixon really doesn't get passes. Joe Mixon is kind of their running down back. Whenever they get into passing situations or two-minute drills or, or third downs, it's Giovanni. But they just gave Giovanni Bernard an $11 million extension. You don't give an $11 million extension to a guy who you don't plan on putting on the field and, and, and using. I got to be honest. I don't have a lot of Mixon, so I'm pretty happy about it. I think I only have maybe one or two shares of him on, you know, 30, 40 best ball teams that I put together. If there was a redraft going on right now, I would have zero interest in Joe Mixon. Yeah. I, so. I don't think he'll have good games, but I just have zero interest because of the way that I think they're going to mix Giovanni Bernard in with them. Uh, I, I don't have – I have zero Joe Mixon, but I got two or three spots where I got Gio Bernard, and I'm feeling pretty good about those because he can come in and play. Obviously, I'm all over Tyler Boyd. Everybody knows that. He goes eight for 60 yesterday. But John Ross, finally – has the game that people have been waiting for. I don't own no John Ross. I am, as the guy who's invested in A.J. Green in a couple spots, I'm going to put in a waiver claim or two for John Ross. Um, his knees are arthritic, just like Ty Gurley's. Um, he's dealt with it for longer than Gurley's dealt with it. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to pay up a lot for him because at some point he'll be hurt. But if he can get me to when A.J. Green comes back in a couple spots, I'll gladly pick him up. But John Ross with a nice game yesterday, doing kind of what we thought he would do finally. Yeah, I mean, you said it. He's also on the waiver wires in a couple places. I mean, even yesterday for DFS, you know, people in chat over at, uh, you know, Elite Fantasy where we do the chats on Friday, Saturday. Well, basically every day of the week, one of us is in there doing chats with the, you know, with the subs. Everybody was talking about Willis. Like, oh, you're playing Willis. You're playing Willis. You're playing Willis. And I was like, God, I'd rather play John Brown. Like, John Brown is – John Ross, sorry. Um, Ross is more of a GPP play because, again, he is like a John Brown or Deshaun Jackson. You know, he's one of those guys whose value really comes from him getting behind the defense and catching a long one. But you saw that yesterday. I mean, he got behind the defense, caught a couple touchdown passes, had over 100 yards. But he did it on what, like four catches? He had like four or five catches for 100 and something yards and a couple touchdowns? Yeah, no. He, he had, I believe he had seven catches, Benny. Oh, did he really have that many? I didn't. I didn't think he had that many. Um, but either either way, I mean, the 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 scoring plays really came from the big ones where he caught the touchdowns, especially the long one. Um, and that's the thing. I mean, he can definitely get behind the defense. If we don't think the Cincinnati Bengals are going to be a very good team this year, then you have to expect that they're going to be playing from behind and throwing the ball more often. Which you know, at least for now, means that these guys are going to be viable and and guys that we need to look at. I think the Bengals might be might be a, a team that gets devalued and might actually be very good against the spread this year. I would uh, look for that. On um, the Dallas Cowboys and the New York Giants, I don't know why I didn't lay the number with the Cowboys, Benny. I was kind of worried about this game. But then um, it start with Dak Prescott. He absolutely goes off, Benny. I had him in a couple spots in my starting quarterback yesterday, and I was thrilled. I've been very tough on Dak Prescott throughout his career, but I can't – yesterday was perfect, basically. Yep. Uh, over 400 yards passing, four touchdowns. Uh, Dak was great. You know what I'm saying? He could be on the way with YA in your league. Trust me. Um, but particularly interesting, Benny, was the receivers. Yes. Gallup, Cooper, and Cobb all should be owned in 12-team leagues. Yeah, I mean, obviously Cooper's owned already in whatever league you're yeah. in. Otherwise, otherwise, your league is soft and invite me next year. <laughs> But Gallup and, and Cobb are guys that are on some waiver wires. Cobb yep. especially is on a lot of waiver wires. And this was – we were watching this game. Like, most of my family is Giant fan. I'm a Jets fan. And the rest of my family is pretty much Giant fan. So, we do, we do the whole Sunday thing at mom's house, you know, the Italians with our, with our pasta and, and all that stuff. So, we were sitting around. It was around dinner time. We were watching the Giant and the, uh, and the Dallas game. And basically, my brother was like, yeah, you know – I always liked Cole Beasley, and he was a guy that I always took, like, at the end of drafts because he always had a nice role with that Dallas offense. And he's like, and Randall Cobb is so much better than Cole Beasley. And I was like, you know what? You're absolutely right. And he kind of showed it yesterday. So Randall Cobb is a guy that I went and looked at last night and was like, man, this is going to suck because I'm not going to get him cheap anywhere. No. But he was available in a lot of my leagues, Corey. So he is somebody that I already have waiver claims in for. Again, he's going to cost a lot of money. I don't think that he's going to be somebody that we're going to be able to get cheap. But, yo, I, I think Ra I slept on Randall Cobb in the preseason, as did a lot of people considering how many leagues he was available and that I was in this year. 
Randall Cobb is gonna have a is gonna have a nice season. Listen, Randall Cobb's injuries are a have been a problem the past couple of years. So mm-hmm. when you're paving fab, you got to be careful about that. But um, I would. What's good about what Randall Cobb this week is, you got guys like Hollywood Brown on the way to Hawaii. It's going to drive Cobb's price down because people are going to pay up for the rookie more so than the veteran. On the other yeah. side of football, Benny, we, you, you know what it is. You know what I'm saying? Saquon was great. Evan Ingram was great. Want to see a little bit more from Sterling Shepard. But th- th- this is just – let's just – this is just, let's just you know, just roll them out there every week. That's all you can do. This is the, the Giants are, are nothing inspiring about the Giants. No, I, I mean I really have nothing to add. If you're really looking, for some, <laughs> if, if you're really looking for some deep waiver wire ads and, and like deeper leagues, fifteen team leagues or something, um, I think Wayne Gallman is going to have a nice little role, kind of spelling Saquon Barkley. And also, like we saw yesterday, when the Giants are down by a couple touchdowns, Wayne Gallman's going to be the guy who's out there on the field. Uh, Cody Latimer, the wide receiver on the other side for them. Um, again, you gotta you gotta worry about what happens when a guy like Golden Tate comes back. But you know, for the next couple of weeks, Cody Latimer is going to be out on the field a lot. Um, you know, basically minimum price DK kind of guy, and probably somebody you can pick up for a dollar or two on your waiver wire this week because you know people aren't really gonna gonna be wanting him. But Giants are going to be trailing in a lot of these games. They're going to be passing. Teams are going to start concentrating on guys like Evan Ingram and, and, and Shepard a little more. And, you know, maybe he finds himself in some one-on-one coverages and has a couple decent games. He had a couple catches yesterday. So, guys you can look at. But, yeah, I mean, I am not high on this offense. I may honestly be higher on this offense later in the year if they ever do decide to put Daniel Jones in there. Um, you know, it is what it is. I mean, I just don't think the Giants are very good. Good game. Uh, I've been, I didn't see one play of Detroit and Arizona. I see that they ended up in a damn tie which is stupid. Um, but the uh, Matthew Stafford goes off. He has a good game, 385-3. and three. Kyler Murray uh, started off slow but uh, turned it up in the second half. He was impressive. Threw the ball 54 times for 308 yards, two touchdowns in the pick. You know what David Johnson is. But what I'm surprised is is Larry Fitzgerald with eight receptions, uh, the kid Keyshawn Johnson with five catches. So uh, they, they use their big pieces uh, on the Arizona side and – this offense kind of is what people thought it would be. I would say I would still be careful uh, with the Arizona Cardinals, but I think the kid Keyshawn's a pickup. Yeah, I, think, I mean, again, you know, he was somebody that was getting some steam towards the end when uh, people basically had him above Andy Isabella as, as a starter and as a guy that was out there on the field. Larry Fitzgerald's probably already owned. Um, Christian Kirk's probably already owned. Both of them played all right yesterday. Uh, especially towards the end of the game when, you know, Murray kind of got things going. The kid, the kid is a lot more comfortable, Corey, in an up-tempo, open-up, spread, like, you know, two-minute drill kind of offense, which a lot of these young kids coming from college are because that's the way the college game kind of is, where it's a little more wide open and stuff like that. Horrendous first, like, two-and-a-half quarters. I mean, he had, like, 70 yards going into the middle of the third quarter. Yeah, and Detroit was up 17 nothing. I had two of the worst bad beats yesterday. I had the Jets, who basically gave it up to the to Buffalo late in that game, and I had the Lions, were my other big bet for the four o'clock game. Um, and again, they they it was Lions minus one, Corey. So they they had a third down with like two and a half minutes left. The coaches called timeout after they already picked up the third down. The play got waved off, and then they decided to throw like a twenty-five yard back shoulder play on like third and one to try to pick up the first down, which made no sense whatsoever to me. Turns out to be incomplete. They give the ball back to Arizona. Arizona marches down the field. Larry Fitzgerald gets in the end zone. They get the two-point conversion. It goes to overtime. Overtime was basically, you know, nothing. Nobody put up any points. And at the end of the day, I wind up losing Detroit minus one when they should have sealed that freaking game with three minutes left. That's Detroit right. coaching, Yeah, the Detroit coaching is, is abysmal. It's as bad as it was last year. They're as stupid as they were last year. You know, I know they want to try to be a running team with Kerryon Johnson, but the passing game was so much better than their running game was yesterday. You have a very good quarterback that can throw the ball. You have some really good weapons outside of wide receiver. Um, even even Amendola in the slot had a big game yesterday. Yeah, trying trying to run with the the pieces that you have on offense is just being. It's it's like smashing your head against the wall for no apparent reason. This is a team that should be balanced or even pass heavy because they have the pieces to do so. Trying to change from that is just stupid. Carry on, 16 carries, 49 yards. I would I would stay patient with carry on. 
Um, CJ Anderson saw 11 carries too, but this is a game that had more plays than most. Um, TJ Hawkinson is the oh, impressive one. Yeah. 6 131 in the touch. I like that, Benny. If he's on waiver wires, he's a priority. Danny Amendola will be hurt at some point, but he goes 7 for 104 on the touch. And then Marvin Jones and Kenny Galladay. Galladay gets a touchdown, but those two guys were really zeros. Yeah, they, they honestly didn't put up. Detroit, sir. And, and well, this is what I'm saying is you, you didn't use your best pieces. Like, if I'm, if I'm going to go and I'm going to go down, I want to go down swinging. I want to go down taking my best shot at other teams. I want to go down with my best players having the ball in their hand and, and being given a chance to make plays. I will say this. They went to Galladay a lot more than they went to Marvin Jones because I watched some of that game yesterday because I had money on it. Marvin Jones really didn't even see the ball until towards the end of the game when it was almost like, oh, yeah, remember this guy Marvin Jones we have on the team who's a pretty good receiver? Maybe we should kind of get him involved a little bit. It, it, it made no sense. The play calling was just made no sense to me. But I'm going to tell you this. It's not going to change. This is going to be the kind of stuff that they do all year long. So Detroit is going to be one of the most frustrating teams, but they do have a lot of talent on both sides of the ball. Um, when you look at – let's get to San Francisco and Tampa. This- Jameis Winston, everybody's supposed to fix Jameis Winston. Nobody's fixed him yet. Three more interceptions yesterday. Ronald Jones carried the football well. I give, I give you Ronald Jones truth is that. Um, terrible game from Mike Evans, O.J. Howard. Listen, this, this, this Jameis got to do fucking better, Ben, period. Yeah. I, I mean, listen, there's nothing I can add here. All these guys are owned, right? So there's really nobody that you're picking up or nothing that we didn't know about this team. What it really comes down to is Jameis needs to play better. This was not one of the tougher matchups that they have on the year. This should have been, this should have been a good game for him. The fact that he struggled and struggled so badly, a couple bad interceptions, like just not completing passes. I, I, if I didn't have a bet on the Tampa Bay under and you can still get it, I think the Tampa Bay under win total is definitely something I'd look at this year because they look that bad. Here's the thing with Jameis Winston. Like my parents would tell me, it's time to shoot the shit or get off the toilet. You know what I'm saying? Well, and for Tampa Bay, too. I mean, they gave him a one-year extension right now to see if they could figure this out. I honestly think that if he plays like this, they move on. Uh, Jimmy G wasn't much better, 166, but he did get the win. The running back situation, Matt Breida saw 15. Tevin Coleman saw six. Raheem Mostert saw nine carries. Coleman also gets hurt, so this situation we got to monitor throughout the course of the week. In the passing game, Kittle gets eight for 54. Uh, Coleman caught two balls. Um, Debo caught three passes. And then Dante Pettis and Marquise Goodwin each caught a pass apiece. Once again, if you're too invested in San Francisco 49ers, that's, that's kind of on you. We like Debo. I like Tevin Coleman. Other than that, it ain't shit on this team, Benny. The, um, oh, George Kittle, obviously. Yeah, Dante Pettis only played like uh, something very small, like five, ten snaps yesterday. It was barely on the field right there. So I don't think he's healthy. Or if he is healthy, I don't know what the hell's going on. Um, yeah, Tevin Coleman getting banged up and seeing Raheem Mostert getting, getting carries yesterday was tilting. I will say this. <laughs> Kittle had not one but two touchdowns called back yesterday. So, yeah, he only went like eight for 60, but he easily could have been 10 for well, a buck 50 and two touchdowns yesterday. Two of them were called back. I think one was a holding and the other one was, I don't know, something, something, something along those lines, hands to the face or something like that. It, it could have been a monster game for Kittle. So Kittle is a guy that, again, I mean, I, I love this guy. I think he's one of the top tight ends in the league. And, I mean, eight for 64, you showed he's Jimmy G's favorite target. He's going to get the ball a lot this year. I really don't want to be touching or messing around with any of these wide receivers. Kendrick Bourne, like they just, everybody got a little bit of a taste yesterday, and I kind of feel like that's the way it's going to be going forward. Yeah, unless somebody can truly break out. We think that guy is Debo. Let's see what happens. I'm willing to play the long game with Debo. Um, mm-hmm. uh, the, the, the rest of it is in his receiving core is a shit show. The Pittsburgh Steelers didn't score a point where they scored three points yesterday to get in the end zone. You know what you got with Pittsburgh. New England plays them very well. New England has them figured out. I wouldn't hit the panic button with my Pittsburgh guys yet, um, so I wouldn't trip off of that. Uh, on the New England side of the football, as somebody that's heavily invested in Sonny Michel, uh, 15 carries, 14 yards, was, it's not good to see. Um, but I'm going to be patient with him. He only played in 33% of the snaps. Matter of fact, no running back played – on more than 50% of the snaps, that including James White. Mm. Phil Dorsett with two touchdowns. 
that's probably going to go away when Mr. Big Chess gets in town. Edelman mm-hmm. does his thing. Josh Gordon gets a score. Jimmy White goes five for 56. It's, it's business as usual, Benny. Yeah, and, and the thing is they have so many weapons. Like I, Fantasy-wise, it's tough because I feel like it's all going to get spread out. The most consistent two guys for fantasy, in my opinion, Tom Brady, who people overlooked again this year, you know, just putting up a bunch of touchdown passes. Oh, that's a matter of fact. I'm glad you mentioned that. He's probably on the waiver wire, too, in your league. It's a good chance he could be there. Uh, go pick him up because he might uh, have another MVP-type numbers. Yeah, I mean, just look at the look at the guys that he's throwing the ball to. I mean, we talked about Edelman. We talked about Gordon. We talked about Antonio Brown. James White is one of the best receiving backs out of the backfield in the last 10 years in football. And then at some point this season when Gronk retires, he's going to have the greatest, <laughs> the greatest set of weapons ever assembled. So, you know, Tom Brady's living the life, man. Yes, and uh, Benny is a Jets fan. You don't sound pleased by that. You got a pick for Houston and uh, New Orleans tonight? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to be on the New Orleans side of this game, right? I, I just think that offense is way too efficient. Um, you know, just, I, I know the Houston defense is good, but you also got to remember they just got rid of Jada, um, Jadavian Clowney. Not going to be as much of a pass rush as they normally have. Uh, you know, Alvin Kamara getting the big role here. The beginning of the season last year when Ingram was suspended and Kamara had the big role, they put up some really big numbers. Um, went a little more pass heavy than they did the rest of the year. And you saw it with, you know, how humming that offense was the first couple of weeks. So I'm expecting them to be psyched up. The game's in New Orleans. They're going to have everybody rocking and rolling in that place. I like the uh, New Orleans Saints to come out tonight and get a get a victory. I like the Saints, and I'd play the over, Corey, because I think this is going to be a game where we see a lot of scoring on both sides. I, I agree with you on that one. Um, that would be a play for me also. Uh, so nothing to add there. The Denver Broncos and the Oakland Raiders tonight, Benny. I don't, want to, I don't ever want to give you two favorites on Monday Night Football because it's a good chance one of them is going to lose. And you got to think it's going to be very difficult for Oakland to win this game, though, Benny, after the week that they've had and everything that's going on. But you know what? A lot of times teams can come together after a situation like this. For me, this is more no bet. If anything, I would play the over 42 and a half because this game – I think this game can go to overtime. Yeah, I think the Raiders win this game. I'm taking Raiders money line tonight. There you go. I think Raiders – and really, like, I just wrote this game up, right? My article will be out a little bit later if you're part of Elite Fantasy. I wrote up the two Monday night slate games. Normally, I do the Monday-Thursday write up on Monday, but with there being two Monday night games, they went Monday-Monday this week. I, I, I just – like, the Broncos just don't impress me. Like, I'm looking, at the, I'm looking at the roster. I'm like, all right, you got Joe Flacco as quarterback. Great. Like, you know. All right, fine. Um, you know, wide receivers, all right, decent guys. Sanders is decent. Uh, you know, Cortland Sutton's decent. Deshaun Hamilton had some big games, but Deshaun Hamilton basically had big games out of the slot, which is where Emmanuel Sanders is going to be this year. So I don't know how those three guys together on the field are really going to fit. Philip Lindsay is okay. Roy Freeman is okay. Devontae Booker's okay. All three of them are probably going to get in there. Noah Fant, their tight end, is a rookie, even though he's, you know, a, a highly drafted rookie. Like, I'm looking at this team, and I'm like, is the – again, I don't think the Raiders have a very good talent level, but is the talent level for Denver really that much better? Uh, I, I would agree. Um, let's give a quick look before we get out of here at the uh, opening lines. for And some of these numbers have moved already. Are uh, the Buccaneers and the Panthers on Thursday night? The Buccaneers are catching six and a half. Um, the Panthers well, – or the Panthers are six and a half point favorite. I would be very careful with that. The Panthers are terrible against the spread – and the Buccaneers got to do something and to show some kind of life. Yeah, um, I love the Panthers in that game, to be honest with you. Uh, worst case scenario, if you're worried about the – was it six and a half, you said? Yeah. Tease that it, – it's at Carolina? Yep. Yeah, tease that down. Use that as one of the first games for your teasers for the weekend. Um, six and a half, you tease it all the way down to a half. Basically, you just need the Panthers to win. Arizona goes to Baltimore to face the Ravens. The Ravens laying 11 and a half. Uh, I would probably lay 11 and a half with the Ravens, Benny. I'm, I, I think Arizona coming across country for a one o'clock start can get ugly. Yeah, I mean, that and the fact that the Ravens are just that much better on both sides of the football. So, yeah, absolutely. Buffalo Bills back in the Meadowlands this weekend. This time to take on the Giants. They lay two to the Giants. Uh, this is no bet for me. Yeah, I, 
I mean, listen, Buffalo came back and beat the Jets, but it's not like they looked really good doing it. That, that offense is just not one that can put up numbers. Although I didn't like the way the Giants offense looked either. What's the total in that game? 42 and a half. Uh, honestly, I think the best bet is the under. I think that's a good bet too. Uh, Dallas travels to D.C. to face the Skins. Um, Dallas lays four and a half in this one. I think Washington is going to be tough. Um, I would tease the Cowboys uh, to get them down, even get them on, on the other side of it. This is like a trap game to me. Because you think Dallas would have came in with a little bit more, but Washington's going to put up a fight next week at home. Uh, what do you think, Benny? Uh, if it's a trap game, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get trapped. I'm taking the bait here because, to me, four and a half on Dallas after the way they looked. Listen, Ezekiel Elliott didn't even have a good game yesterday, and they dismantled the Giants. So I am, I am very high on this Dallas Cowboys team. Um, which you should be happy about, but I think the Cowboys go in there and just just bitch smack them. So I'm all I, over I, the I Cowboys. Like that happen, but I, uh, you know, Benny, sometimes a big public favorite like Dallas, they're going to get 90% of the money and 90% of the bets. I don't know that. There's something about that just doesn't fit me right. Um, I'll, I'll tell you right now, I'll take the four and a half now because that's going to be six, six and a half by game. Oh, it's going to move up. You're right. That, 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 that can close the seven. Right. Um, mm-hmm. Indianapolis and Tennessee, I'll still ride the Colts are catching three. And this one, I'll still ride the coach catch catching points. I, I don't want to. I don't want to touch this one right now because I don't know how good Tennessee is. I, I, and I, I, I know that sounds a little weird to say, but listen, if everybody was so high on Cleveland, Tennessee just absolutely dismantled Cleveland. I need to see more before I'm willing to put my money against them. Um, so I'm going to kind of sit this one out and 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 probably not bet on either side of it. Uh, Jacksonville and Houston. I would if this. Uh, I would give a quick lean to Jacksonville catching eight and a half. I'm going to be honest with you, Corey. We haven't seen Houston yet because they play tonight. No so doubt. ask me this question again tomorrow, and I'll have an opinion because I want to see what they look like tonight before I say anything. Another potential trap game right here, Benny. The Chargers come across country to face the Lions at 1 p.m. The Chargers are laying two and a half at the Lions. It seems like that number should be four and a half or something like that. The fact that it's only two and a half, that scares me. I'll take the two and a half. I'll stay, I'll stay on the right side of three with them on the road because I do think they're the better team. So I'll take the Chargers minus the two and a half. No doubt. Uh, the Vikings travel to Green Bay. It's another interesting spot right here where the number doesn't seem right. The Vikings travel to Green Bay to take on the Packers. The Packers laying three and a half at home. The Vikings are a better football team than the Packers. I like the Vikings, but – I would have liked them if it was three or two and a half. If I have to give up the hook, I'm probably not going to bet it. Uh, I, I feel you on that one. Uh, the Patriots travel to Miami to face the Dolphins. The Patriots laying 15 and a half. They might be the Dolphins by 50. Yeah, I, I, would, I would agree with 100% what you said. To me, after watching the Dolphins last week get dismantled, or yesterday really get dismantled by the Ravens, I'm betting against the Dolphins – all season long. So 15 and a half is a lot of points, but I expect the Patriots to just put a, put a whooping on them. No doubt. Uh, San Francisco and Cincinnati. Uh, San Francisco is a road favorite at, my, at, at one and a half. These people are so slick, Benny. San Francisco is a favorite in this game, but you know what? Even this is like a, this is like a trap too, but they'll get me on this one. I'll money line the Bengals right now. They have plus one Oh two. What is the total in this one? 46, 45. All right, good. I was going to say if it's under 47, I want the over. So I'll take the over in this game. It's probably my favorite thing. I mean, San Francisco did put up some points. And, um, you know, again, you know, if the uh, the red rifle is going to go out there and throw for 400 yards, I'm all for it. So I think points in this game, I'm taking the over. Since uh, Seattle travels to Pittsburgh, Seattle catching three and a half at Pittsburgh. Uh, right now, at this point in the week, I don't have no bet. I want to see some more out of Pittsburgh to figure out what happened. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't – again, this is part of overreaction Monday. I don't want to say the Pittsburgh Steelers suck because they played what I consider to be the best team in football yesterday and got their ass kicked for it. You could have substituted the Pittsburgh Steelers for probably 25 teams in the league yesterday, and the result would have been the same. So I want to see them against a non-Super Bowl-bound Patriots team before I really make my opinions on what the Steelers are going to be this year. I would agree with you on that one. Uh, the Chiefs and the Oakland Raiders play. I don't like laying the laying a road team in a division matchup, especially at a big number like nine. But I, with the Chiefs, oh, I'll make an exception. <laughs> it's, nine, it's nine minus nine or nine and a half? Nine. 
All right, I'll tell you right now my favorite bet of the week. Go ahead and do this, and you'll, you'll all make some money. Take the teaser right now. Tease that down to three. Tease the um, Panthers down to .05, and yep, yep. You'll, you'll be really happy on Sunday when you cash because I definitely think Kansas City wins that game. I see them winning by at least a field goal, if not more. But nine points is tough. If, as we learned, anybody who took the Eagles yesterday, you know, backdoor covers when you got that many points, they come because that's just the way things work. So tease it down to three. I feel a lot better about it. Kansas City, Panthers, teaser. Go ahead and take it. Uh, the Bears and the Broncos, I'll pick them. I would, uh, I, would, I would need more information on that, Benny. Before, that, that's not something I'm looking at right now. Yeah, I'm not, any game where we haven't seen the team play yet, I'm, I'm not going to touch until at least tomorrow. So we'll, talk, we'll come back. We'll talk about some of those games tomorrow after we see what happens tonight in these two Monday night games. Uh, finish it off right quick. Rams-Saints rematch in the NFC Championship game. The Rams are three-and-a-half-point favorites at home. I would go the Saints way. Most likely, yeah. I mean, again, let's see how the Saints look tonight as long as everything's there. I, I wasn't super impressed with the Rams yesterday. I really wasn't. I think the Saints are a lot better than Carolina. Um, I, I think that's going to be a really good game. As of now, though, I have zero desire to bet either side of it. No doubt. Uh, Philadelphia and Atlanta. And Atlanta comes in as a pick em. I would go Falcons. I think uh, if people are going to be off the Falcons after that poor performance. I think they write the ship. The total is 51. I think I like the Falcons in the over in that one. I do like points in that game. I, I think I'm leaning on the Eagles side right now. I, I Again, I don't know if I would bet on that game. It's probably one I'd just rather watch. But if I yeah. had to make a bet, I would probably be on the Eagles side of it. And finally, the New York Jets and the Cleveland Browns on Monday night, one week from the day, the Cleveland Browns are rebound and uh, Odell and Baker and everything is back to normal. They're a one-point favorite. That's it? That's it. <laughs> That's I, mean, it like, right I, 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 I don't think they're as good as a lot of people thought they were going to be, but I really don't think they're bad enough that there should only be a one-point favorite over the Jets. I got two big pieces of chicken, Benny, before I go run upstairs to the bathroom. They go to Lamar Jackson and Joe Burrow, the LSU quarterback. Who you got? Yeah, mine is going to go to Austin Eckler because I have an obnoxious amount of shares of him. <laughs> he put up a big, big game for me yesterday, and I even played him over in – Yahoo, where he was really cheap. I had him on a lot of my teams over there, and he was a big reason why I had a pretty good day over there. All right. For my main man, Benny Ricciardi, I'm Corey Parson, the fantasy executive, the opening line. We are out.